Well, we got special delivery today. Ordered a new battery from Signature Solar. Uh, check out the affiliate link in the description. If you are planning on buying anything, please use that. Uh, as you can see, we have lots of snow. I haven't even blown the snow yet. So um, this is a EG4LL battery and we will get this wrangle down into the basement and put in the rack and get it all hooked up. All right, guys, I started out doing a whole video on uh, just putting the battery in and getting it all hooked up. But as I started editing it, I was like, I really want to do more of as to why I'm adding batteries than just the process of adding the battery. I mean, that that's pretty simple. You know, uh, I guess the main point to that is to make sure you turn everything off shut down your system double check make sure that you don't have any voltage left that's the main thing make sure that your system is de-energized completely before you start working on it because at 48 volts it can really hurt you so just a matter of pulling one the battery that was at the top putting it down there and then putting the new battery here and hooking up the the cables um i'm still waiting on the communication cable to go from this battery to the victron servo so i really i really wanted to just touch on the reasons why I'm adding batteries. Uh, I knew from the very beginning that I did not have enough batteries. And my goal is I want to be able to run this for three days at the worst time of the year, which is now. I mean, we just had the winter solstice, shortest day of the year. We've had maybe four or five days of sun in the last month um let me throw up a chart and show you you can see the peaks of you know when i got lots of charging and most days i didn't even do enough uh solar to you know do more than what i was using so i've had to use the grid to charge this several times um, I'm gonna have to actually turn it on again because I'm down to about 22% right now but we are supposed to have some Sun today which will help but um, if I can get so I have enough battery reserve to let this run for three days with the loads that I want to run on it you know all my essential loads that's what my goal is uh right now i'm only running my security system and my outdoor wood stove which is the outdoor boiler and a yard light which is using about four thousand watts a day and it's not keeping up during the summer I get way more power than what I need granted I'm not running the wood boiler but if I can I want to size this for you know worst worst case scenario which is three days of no charging or very little charging so I'm going to have to add a lot more batteries and that's just going to take some time. The other side of the equation with going solar is energy efficiency 
for you know the power that you're using and I actually started doing that before I got into doing this the whole solar thing I had you know, I still have an electric boiler tied into my floor heat it's a 15 kW boiler and I was using that and my electric bills in the winter time were seven to eight hundred dollars a month and that's at 11.6 cents a kilowatt hour and <clears throat> I was like well if I can lower my electric bill by being more efficient with the stuff that I you know I'm already using you know take those steps I'll that's going to be a, a big part of this so I actually set a goal of you know like dropping my power consumption by 10% a year and when I put that outdoor wood boiler I built an outdoor wood boiler I I bought some quarter inch plate steel I welded it made my own lines going out out to it with some three quarter inch pecs and some pipe insulation and put it in some uh drain tile and and that worked really well and i could see you know great improvements uh but i didn't have the the gains that i really had wanted i ran that for about two winters and then i i was able to get a used wood boiler and then i bought the actual lines the insulated it's four inch pvc pipe with spray foam and plastic on the outside and inch and a quarter lines and that's what this is the lines coming into the house <clears throat> and that made a pretty good difference in like the amount of wood i was using and just being able to control it better there's still steps that I've been able to make to make that better uh, one of the things I did was I I did that one of the first videos I did was adding the Taiko uh, what the heck number is that well anyways I added the Taiko ECM circulator pump and that made a huge difference in the amount of power that I was using. The new one, you know, on full tilt uses 36 or 37 watts. So that made a huge difference in how much power I was using. Plus having a factory built stove is just more efficient than what I had cobbled together in the la this last year in trying to make the house more energy efficient I did things like LED lights in the garage I put in some triple pane windows on the back side of the house that was because the windows that we have had uh we have we've always fought high humidity in our house so even in the winter we run dehumidifiers and i'm working on that one of the other thing or some of the other things i did was new exterior door and dog door in the garage um the wood dryer project which works pretty well uh, the only complaint that my wife has is that it takes longer to dry the clothes. So 
I've got an improvement on that coming up with the humidity. We had to run a dehumidifier in the basement and one upstairs. And a project that I'm working on for that is to get some air circulation from the basement going all the way up, blowing air upstairs because the air in the basement with the dehumidifier running you know it it's stable so by blowing that air up and then it pushes the air back down i've been able to balance out the humidity in the house so i'm down to one dehumidifier running i think it runs a little bit more often but the house humidity has been more stable i've been able to keep it lower i got it as low as it'll go right now at like 35 percent so that's been a a really good project i got some improvements coming to that and i will do a video on that later why am i trying to do all of this and the house improvements and all that stuff well we just in the last newsletter from the power company and i knew this was coming is they're looking at doing a rate increase and in minnesota if you don't know a couple years ago they passed a bill that is like in 13 years they want like all our power coming from renewables and I don't feel that that's that that whole segment of the power industry is there yet to support it I mean uh, I'm sure there's some stuff out there that will make it more stable but my worry is that as we go towards renewable our power is going to get to be rest less reliable and we're gonna have brownouts blackouts whatever especially during peak demands i've seen stuff on different forums where they're saying that you know it's a we're getting closer and closer to it being a really good possibility of this stuff starting to happen you know kind of like how they have it going on in California. And here in Minnesota, especially in the winter, uh, not having power means you don't have heat. And I want to definitely have heat. Uh, especially with my full-time job, uh, I'm kind of out and about in the worst of the worst conditions plowing snow nobody really knows where we're going to end up with uh what our power rates are going to be so as the power rates go up this becomes more and more viable uh the payback on it which i'm not doing it for that i'm doing this so that when the power is out and i need to go to work i don't have to worry about my heat my freezers uh we'll still have some lights and you know that kind of stuff so i can go out do my job come back and not have to worry about it so that's kind of the the whole premise of adding more batteries and having the solar um my goal is i got five batteries right now if you could see see that there and my goal is i want to get fill, fill out this rack I got room 
right here for one of those three battery racks I'd like to put three more right here and then we'll see where we go from that um, I'd I'd really like to get one of them ones that stands up along the wall but getting that down here would be about impossible because they're about 350 pounds so right up here is the garage I may get one or two of them and stand them right there kind of where my toolbox is right now and I can just run the cables down here so that's kind of the whole the whole reason of trying to make the house more energy efficient and having the solar so it's been a really good year uh, by putting the big array in my smaller array is out of commission right at the moment so I need to fix that I'm hoping that this summer I can add another array that is going to be more geared for December January for harvesting power uh, so I can get my panels more straight up and down and facing south and catching more more light during the winter probably the one biggest drawback to solar panels in Minnesota that I'm dealing with is if it snows obviously the panels are covered and I don't necessarily get out to the panels to knock that off in a timely manner if I can put panels more straight up and down so they don't get covered with snow so I can catch sun on the days that I don't get out there to knock the snow off of the other panels that would be a good deal all right guys at this point of the video if you're still watching you are the guys that really uh really make this doing this worthwhile to me um you're awesome thanks for watching and subscribing and i really i really get a kick out of it and i guess we will send her off here thanks for watching and we will catch you on the next one